Good day, Grant 12. Welcome to this um, next lesson in electricity. In this lesson, I've decided that it would be best for us to go through a whole bunch of exam type questions like this one um, in order to make sure that you guys really understand electricity. Electricity is um, quite a big part of the paper, paper one and it pays, plays, it plays a decent part in the size of the questions in paper one and I find a lot of people actually fall flat on electricity for the simple reason that they, um, like I said before, you learn about it in grade 10 and then they skip grade 11, you don't touch it. And then when you get to grade 12, you're like, what? Again, and then you have to remember everything and then they add stuff to it. Okay, so <laughs> let's make sure you guys understand. It says you've got three light bulbs. This is a multiple choice question. By the way, I said multiple choice, not multiple guess. We're actually going to work things out properly, okay? It says you've got three Three light bulbs X, Y, and Z with resistances of R, 2R, and R. Okay, are connected in a circuit as shown below. The battery has negligible internal resistance, which means we can ignore it. It says when the switch closes, the reading on the ammeter is 2,5 amps. Okay, it says which one of the following um, correctly describes the readings on the ammeter? In amps when bulb Z burns out, when bulb Z burns out, okay. So when bulb Z burns out, what is going to happen? Your resistance is actually going to increase, do you agree? Which means that your um, current is going to decrease. So therefore, it cannot be the first two. It has to be one of these two, okay. So therefore, we can say, okay, fine, we no longer have Z. So therefore, there's no current in A3, which is agreed. Now we have to work out how the current is split. So now they're saying that the current is now 1,5. And it's been split in a ratio of 1 to 2. So we want double the amount of current to go through this one. I mean, yeah, to this, go through this one then to go through this one. Okay, so therefore the correct answer has to be D. Why do we want double the amount of current to go through this one then with this one? Because do you see that this has got resistance R and this is 2R? So therefore half the current should go through that and the double the current should go through this. So if, in other words, if I give you 1 times R, I end up with 1R. If I give you a half multiplied by 2R, I get 1R and that would be the size of the voltage through both of these, okay? Because V is equal to IR and V in parallel resistors is always equal. So if I let this be 1 and this resistance was R, I would get 1 multiplied by R, which is 1R. So the voltage across this lot would be 1R. Then you've got this one. Yeah, the current is a half if we choose this one. A half times by 2R, the half cancels with 2 and what you're left with is 1R. So therefore the voltage will be the same again. So that the answer has to be D. And just to go through it again with you guys, because I think I just leapt into it without explaining it properly. If, let me just erase all the ink. If the switch is closed and you have a 2.5 amps, okay? Do you agree that this is a triple branch? Okay, so therefore the electrons have got three ways to get through to this side. Okay, if suddenly the light bulb in Z burns out, this is now no longer a path option. Okay, so now suddenly the current has to go through those two branches. Okay, and if that's the case, do you agree that that means that you're going to have a higher resistance. Think about what we said yesterday with the traffic and the analogy of the traffic, that the more routes you have to get through, the less the resistance, okay? The more lanes you have to travel in, the less the resistance. So I've just closed the lane, so therefore I'm going to have a higher resistance. Okay, so therefore the current cannot be the same. It has to be less because the current, remember, is the rate at which the electrons go through. And if there's a greater resistance, then obviously the rate at which the electrons go through is going to be smaller. Okay, now let's look at this. I apologize for the fact that this is skew. I tried to change it and I couldn't. Um, 
these questions come from these exam papers come from the Department of Education website where they scan in the papers and somebody who is responsible for scanning this paper and scanned it in skew. <laughs> And I must admit I did try and turn it, but uh, my equipment is not accurate enough. It kept on turning it worse than it already was. So I left it. Okay, so I apologize that it's skew. It says, in which one of the circuits, and again, this is a multiple choice, not a multiple guess, it's one, which one of the circuits will the reading on the voltmeter be the smallest? It says the cells and the resistors are identical in each circuit. Okay, the cells and the resistors are identical in each circuit. Okay, so let's pretend that this is R. So if we had, yeah, we got two R. Yeah, we got R. And yeah, we've got R and R. Okay, do you agree that A and D are actually the same thing? It doesn't matter. Actually, no, it's not. I apologize, it's not. Because the current's not even gonna go through that resistor. Hmm. Okay, this is a tricky one because if you look at this, what's going to happen is that, hmm, okay, <laughs> okay, this voltmeter is actually measuring the EMF over here. Okay, it's not actually measuring the resistor because what's going to happen is that this current is going to do this. La 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 And then this is in parallel with this place here. And there's no actual difference in the potential difference over there. So it's not even actually reading the EMF because the EMF would be across this. This is across a single wire, which is not trying. Okay. Right, let me explain what's going on. Sorry, just deep in thought without thinking. Okay, in all of these, this one, this one, and this one, the voltmeter is parallel over the battery, but it's also parallel over the resistors. Okay, however, in this one, it is parallel over the resistor and the battery, I agree, but it's also parallel over this piece of wire here. And what's tricky about that is that electrons are super lazy. They want to take the path of least resistance. The electrons are not going to travel through the resistor. They are going to travel here. Okay, across this wire, yeah. So if the voltmeter is measuring between these two points, where there is no energy requirement to get from that point to that point, the voltmeter reading is going to be zero. So therefore, the correct answer is D. Okay. Now, next question. Again, I apologize for being skew. Same exam paper. Okay, it says, in circuit A and B, but they're good questions, which is why I included it. Okay, otherwise I wouldn't have included it. In circuit A and B shown below, all the resistors and cells are identical. Okay, all the resistors and cells are identical. So do you agree that we've got X and uh, whatever, and this is Y and Y. Okay, it says if the power dissipates um, by X, dissipated by X equals P, then the power dissipated by Y would be what? Okay, right, so what did I teach you always? I always said to you what you need to do is to make sure you got your formula sheet, okay, so that you can look at your equations and see if it helps you at all, okay. So the power equations on your formula sheet are power is equal to work over time, which is equal to VI, which is equal to I squared R, which is equal to V squared over R. Okay, now it says the resistors and the cells are the same all the way through, okay? And the voltmeter is reading the volts across, okay? And it says the power dissipated across X equals P. So the power, if I had to measure the power here, it's going to equal P, okay? The power dissipated by Y will be equal to what? Okay, so what we need to think about is what the current would be if we're going through, so we, sorry, we need to choose one of these equations. We either have to look at, well, we're not going to look at work over time, let's get real. So we either have to look at VI, or we have to look at I squared R, or we have to look at V squared over R, okay? So the voltage is going to be different in these, 
okay because this is in series and this is in parallel so I would look at that equation there okay right so let's have a look at it okay so if this is x do you agree this is x okay so therefore do you agree that um, It's a very easy way for you go. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to think of the easiest way. To, I know what the answer is. I'm trying to think of the easiest way to explain it to you. So let's have a look at this. If this was X and this is X as well, because there are two of them, what we could do to make it very easy for ourselves is we could say, for example, that this is a four volt cell and this is a one ohm resistor. And we want to know what the current is that's going to go through there. Okay, happy with that. Then do you agree that that would mean that, and they don't say there's any internal resistance. Okay, well then it's very easy. We can use, we can use V squared over R. Okay, we're gonna use V squared over R because it's easier. Okay, right. So do you agree that that's the power? Okay. So yeah, this is going to be four over two. Okay, why is it 4 over 2? Because total resistance is going to be 2 and the voltage is 4 squared. So therefore, it's 4 squared is 16 over 2, which is 8. Okay, so the power that would be going through, uh, just by x, sorry, the power that would be going through Okay, is eight. Whereas over here, what is happening? Yeah, this is a one ohm resistor and this is a one ohm resistor. So do you agree that this resistance here would be now would be um, one over R parallel is one over one plus one over one, which is going to be two. So the total resistance here is two is going to be sorry. Oh, sorry, I'm really struggling today. I don't know what the heck is going on with me. Okay, let's just do it think theoretically. Do you agree that the power going through here is going to be P? Okay, P. And P is dependent on the voltage and the current, which can be written as well as V squared over R, or it can be written as I squared R. Okay, so do you agree that here, what is happening is the current, all the current is going through here, and we are looking at this resistance X. Yeah, do you agree that half the amount of current is going through here? Okay, half the amount of current, okay. Um, but the resistance is also for the whole lot is going to be um, a lot smaller on the whole circuit, okay. So therefore the current is going, to, although the half the amount of current is going to go from each three, the current is going to be doubled. So if you look at the fact that the current is doubled and it's squared, it means that the our final answer has to be D, which is 4P. <sighs> I really didn't explain that very well. Let me try again, guys. Sorry. Okay, let me try again. Do you agree that the current going through here is A? Okay, so going through here, la, 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 And that with a specific resistance, say for example, X and X. I don't know why they decided to make this Y. Now, because this res these resistors are in parallel and they're the same size, it halves, it halves the resistance. Okay, it halves the resistance. But we know that V is equal to IR. And the V is constant in both of these for the simple reason that they tell us that the cell is identical. So if we half the resistance, that means we're going to be doubling the current in this bit. Okay, so we double the current. Which means that if we're doubling the current, if we look at this formula, if we double the current, it's going to be 2 squared times by R. So that whatever the current is, so it becomes 4 times R in this case. So therefore, 4 times the power will be going through Y, will be dissipated by Y, given off by Y, then it will be by X. I hope that explains it a bit better. Okay, in the circuit diagram below, resistors are connected in parallel as well as in series. Okay, so before we even start, I like to go around the circuit and have a look at what's going on. 
So we got la 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 la, oops, switch. Then we got parallel form and tour. There's a random resistor, there's a voltmeter, and there's another switch with a 5 ohm resistor. Comes all back, 3 ohm resistor in series, and then back, and notice we have an EMF of 24 volts. It says, the battery has an EMF of 24 volts and an internal resistance of 1 ohm, which I'm going to fill in. Switch S1 is closed. When switch S1 is closed, the voltmeter reading, V1, is 21 volts. Okay. Explaining the words, the meaning of potential difference of 21 volts. 21 volts of potential difference is the actual voltage that is applied to the circuit. Okay, happy with that. Okay, now it says calculate the reading on voltmeter V2 and the power dissipated by R. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Do you agree it's going to go la, 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 la. It splits. It goes up. Yeah. And down. And across. And it goes across. Yeah. And it grows across here. Now, guys, in order to work out V2, do we need R? No, we don't, because the reading on V2 is going to be the same whether we measure it across the form and term, or we measure it across the R for the simple reason that volts in parallel circuits are always equal. Okay. So now, there are a couple of ways that you can do it, um, but we know that the... EMF is equal to I, big R plus little r. Okay, that's one way of doing it. Um, the other way to do it is to think that this is EMF is equal to the volts applied to the circuit plus I times little r. Since we have the EMF is 24 volts, and the potential difference, which is the potential difference applied to the circuit is 21, plus I times the internal resistance. Um, yeah, it's fine. I times the internal resistance, which is one. Do you agree that we can work out what the current is through the main circuit? Okay, the current is through the main circuit. So do you agree that 24 minus 21 is three amps? The three amps is the current through the main circuit. So there is three amps. If I had to put an ammeter here, it's measuring three amps. Which means that if I put a random voltmeter here, I would be able to work out the volts there. V is equal to IR. Okay. So if that's the case, we've got V is three times by three, which is just nine volts. So now that I know that this is 9 volts and the total voltage was 21, the voltage that has to be going across this lot is going to be 21 minus 9, which is 12 volts. So the reading on voltmeter V2 is 12 volts. Okay, so this is 12 volts, okay, going across there. Now it says they want the power dissipated by resistor R. Okay, the power. Okay, so let's think about that. Let's think about that. Okay, so since we have... Okay, so first of all, our equation for power. Power is equal to VI, which is V squared over R, which is I squared R, which is W over T, which is we don't use this to discuss. Okay, so any way that we want to do this, we need to get, we can either get the volts in the current, which we could do. Okay, we know that the volts through this branch here is 12 volts, right? And we know the volts across this branch is 12 volts, the one through R is 12 volts, right? We could use the fact that we've got the resistance here in the 12 volts to find the current 3 amp. Okay, we know that the total current is 3 amp, so let's work out what the current is just through this bit, okay? So we got V is equal to IR, the total volts going through this bit here, well, it will always be, it's 12 volts. The current we're trying to work out and the resistance is 6 ohms. So therefore, do you agree that the current going through this top branch is going to be 2 amps? So there's 2 amps going through here. 
but we know that the total number of current total amount of current going through this thing is three amps which means there's one amp going through this resistor here so then we can just use this equation we can go p is equal to vi which is equal to the volts which is 12 times per one which is going to be 12 and what is power measured in it's measured in watts there we go Hmm. Now it says we close switch. We now close switch S2. Okay. And it says how will the power dissipated by the 3 ohm resistor be affected? Write down only increase, decrease, or remain the same. Okay. Do you agree that by Putting in switch two, okay, what are we doing? We are increasing the resistors in parallel. We're increasing the resistors in parallel, okay? If we are doing that, that means that we are decreasing the overall resistance of the circuit, which means we're increasing the current, okay? That resistor, the 3 ohm resistor, is going to be still remaining the same, but we've increased the overall current, so therefore we can say that the power is increased. And how? what is my explanation? This is my explanation. By adding the 5 ohm resistor, I've decreased the overall resistance of the circuit, therefore increasing the current, and therefore they'll increase the power that is dissipated by that resistor. Right, that was quite a nice question. Right, let's look at this one. Okay, it says, the circuit diagram is a multiple choice, eh? The circuit diagram shows two light bulbs of resistance form and two ohm. They're connected in parallel. And then you've got two resistors that are in series, also form and six ohm, or form and six ohm. Um, now it says the two ohm light bulb burns out. Okay, sorry. What happens to the reading on voltmeter P? Okay. What happens to the reading on voltmeter P? Do you agree that the two ways to think of it? The one way to think of it is to think that all the current is going to be going now through the forum resistor. Okay. And 3 times 4 is 12, whereas before it was split. So therefore, the volts is going to be higher. Okay, so definitely it is going to increase. The correct answer is going to increase. Another way to think of it is that a voltmeter is measuring the amount of energy required to get through a certain um, section. And with the term resistor light bulb still being there, there would have been less resistance because we would have had a branch okay but now it's gone so there's a greater resistance that's so going to take more energy to get through that section and therefore the voltmeter reading is going to increase right sandile and peter build a battery for a science fair okay they use potatoes for the cells with zinc and copper plates as electrodes. Okay, great, great twelves. I have to tell you something. I've done this experiment. Oh, I don't know why I'm switching this volume up. Sorry, I didn't mean to switch the volume up. Um, I've done this experiment, and I have to tell you, it takes a heck of a lot of potatoes <laughs> to make um, a little LED clock light up. Okay, this light bulb that they're shining here must be a a seriously tiny light bulb or LED that requires almost no energy for this to work properly. Okay, or maybe they're not showing you that this is actually connected to a heck of a lot more potatoes to make it work, okay? But for their analogy, they, and for this example, you've only got these two potatoes. Okay, it says they used potatoes for the cells with zinc and copper plates as electrodes. Okay, fair enough. Sandile and Peter were curious to find out how many potato cells connected in series would be needed to make a pen light bulb glow. Okay. It says write a suitable hypothesis for this investigation. 
Okay, now remember the important things about a hypothesis. What are the important things? One is that it's a statement. You are making a statement. Two is that you need to realize that, that it doesn't have to be a correct statement, but it has to relate variables, okay? So you can't go, I think it'll glow a lot, or I think they should try six potatoes, or I think six potatoes will work. You need to relate it statement. So you need to say, a suitable hypothesis for this investigation would be um, something along the lines of um, the more battery, the more potatoes connected in series, the brighter the light bulb. Okay. The third thing you need to remember is that it doesn't have to be correct. It doesn't have to be a correct statement. It's an hypothesis. It's a best guess. So you could say something along the lines of uh, the more potatoes connected in series, the dimmer the light bulb. But you have to relate the two. Now it says write down the dependent variable of investigation. Now the dependent variable is the one that you measure. The independent variable is the one you're changing. And it says they were curious to find out how many potato cells connected in series would be needed to make a pen light bulb glow. Okay. So the dependent variable would be what you're measuring. Okay. So what are you measuring? You, you actually... Um, I would say you're measuring the brightness of the light bulb, okay? Now it says, Sandila and Peter started with two potatoes connected in the series as shown in the picture above. They used a voltmeter directly over the electrodes and measured potential difference of 1.6 volts. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Next, they connected a 1.5 volt bayonet battery between the electrodes. The learners found that the bulb did not glow. When they measured the potential difference across the globe, it was 0.02 volts. Okay, now they're saying, what is the EMF of the battery with two potato cells connected in series? Well, the EMF is the maximum voltage that can be supplied by the uh, by the two, um, light, I mean, two potatoes. Okay, in which case it's what the, bat, the actual voltmeter measured. In this case, it is 1.6 volts. Okay. Now it says, give a reason why the potential difference across the bulb was only 0.02 volts. Well, because the, the, the bulb wasn't really glowing, was it? So there was a tiny amount of energy going through it. And therefore that 0.02 volts was just a measure of what current was going through it, okay? The bulb is a resistance of two ohms. It says calculate the power dissipated by the bulb even though it is not visibly glowing. So we know that power is can be given. Power can be given by V squared over R. And they've told us the volt is 0, 0,02 squared. And they told us the resistance was two. So I'm gonna get out my calculator. And I'm going to go 0.02, no, I'm not, 0.02 squared divided by 2 equals 0, comma, hmm, let's try again, three zeros, 0, 0, did I get that wrong? No, 0, 2. Now remember grade 12 that you're not supposed to write your answers like that past two decimal places. So you actually need to change this up to scientific notation. So the way you do it is you move your comma to behind the two. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. So it's going to be two times by 10 to the negative four. And what is power measured in? It's measured in what? There we go. Right. Let's look at this nice question. Okay, it says the circuit diagram below shows two resistors of resistance 4 ohm and 5 ohms, each connected in parallel to resistor R1 of unknown resistance. Okay, the battery has an EMF of 15 volts and an unknown internal resistance. Okay, so state ohms law and words. I'm not going to do it. You guys learn it. V equals IR is what it's saying. Okay. Then it says when switch S is closed, the ammeter has a reading of 1.5 amps and the voltmeter now has a reading of 
Okay. It says calculate the resistance of R1. R1. Okay. So. I'm thinking. Okay. So we know that now what do we have? We've got. Okay. So do you agree that we can say that the EMF is equal to V to the circuit, okay, plus V last, okay. We know what the volts to the circuit were. The volts to the circuit were 12.9 volts. 12,9 volts is the volts to the circuit. Okay, we don't know the internal resistance and we don't know the current. But we do know that this 12.9 volts is the same as if we put it across here. Okay, that would be the same measurement because this 12.9 volts is supplying all of this. Okay, so it's supplying all of this. So if that's the case, then we can say, well, we therefore know what the, the, the voltage in this bit okay, is going to be the same as the voltage in that bit. So therefore the voltage across R1 has to also be 12,9 volts. We know the current in that bit, I, is 1,5 amps. So therefore we can work out what R1 is. So we go V is equal to IR. We want R, so therefore R is equal to V over I. The volts are 12,9 over the current which is 1,5 so we're going to pop open our calculator and we're going to get 12.9 divided by 1.5 equals 8,6 so the resistance of R1 is 8,6 ohms ohms okay 8,6 then it says calculate the equivalent resistance of the parallel circuit. Okay, so fair enough, we need to work out what the equivalent resistance of these two is. So what are we going to do? We need to first work out the resistance of the series circuit bit, which is just 9 ohms. Do you agree? 4 plus 5. And then we've only really got two cells, I mean two resistors in parallel, and that means we can use RP is equal to R1, R2 over R1 plus R2, okay, so that is going to be 9 times by 8,6 over 9 plus 8,6, so let's get that on our calculators and we're going to go times 9 equals divided by 17.6 six equals is four point three nine seven 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 i'm going to round that up so it becomes four point four so it's four comma four ohms so the equivalent resistance of the parallel circuit is four comma four ohms now it says calculate the internal resistance of the battery okay now we can do that okay um why can we do that because since we've got the equivalent resistance, okay, of the parallel circuit and we have the voltage, we can work out the current in the actual circuit. Okay, watch, I'll show you. We have got the EMF, which equals 15, is equal to the volts of the circuit plus the V last, okay which equals I big R, okay, plus I little r. This we've got, it's 12,9, but we need this I, and we can get this I now because the whole of this is going to be 4,4 ohms, and the volts is 12,9, so we can work out the total current going through this. So we can say I is going to be 12,9, V equals I R, I is equal to V of R, I think. Yeah. over 4,4 four, 
we pop this in our calculator. So we got 12.9 divided by 4.4.4 equals, which is 2.93. So that's 2,93 amps. So now we know the current in the whole circuit is 2,93. So we go, this is 12,9 plus 2,93 times by little r, and that is equal to 15. So now we've got this, so we can solve for little r. So we can go 15 minus 12,9 is equal to 2,93 r, and we can divide both sides by 2,93. So we cancel those two. Okay, so let's find that out. We're gonna go 15, minus 12.9 equals divided by 2.93 equals, press the SD button, and R is 0.7167. So remember, we're always running off to two decimal places. So in order to do that, we need to look at the six, and that is above five or five and above. So we're rounding that up. So it becomes 0, 0,72. So therefore the internal resistance is 0, 0,72 ohms. There we go. That was a nice question. Overall, that was a very nice question. I like that question. Okay. Look, another multiple guess. No, I'm kidding. It's a multiple choice. Okay. It says in the circuit below, bulbs X and Y are identical. Okay. Which one of the following correctly describes the initial change, initial change in total resistance, and the reading the ammeter when switch S is closed? Okay, well, do you agree that when switch S is closed, like this, when switch S is closed, what happens to the resistance? Do you agree the resistance overall is going to go down? Okay, it's going to go down, it has to, because now we've got two lanes. Okay, so what is going to happen to the current? The current has to increase because now we can go faster through the circuit. So therefore, the correct answer is D. Okay, let's have a look at this question. It says, the battery in the circuit represented in the diagram below has an internal resistance of R. When switch S is closed, the reading on the voltmeter is 18 volts. So so, sorry, sorry, the reading on voltmeter 2 is 18 volts. So this is 18 volts here, yeah. okay? And the resistor dissipates, oh, this is a nice question. And the resistor R dissipates 13.5 watts, 13,5 watts. Okay, right. It says calculate the resistance of R. Okay, so we know that P is equal to V squared over R. We have V, it's 18. We have the power, it's 13.5, so we can get R. R is going to be V squared divided by the power. So it's going to be 18 squared divided by 13,5. So we're going to whoop out the calculator, and we're going to go 18 squared divided by 13.5 equals 24. So the resistance is 24 ohms. Okay, 24 ohms. Nice question. Now it says calculate the reading on the ammeter. Okay, well, since we have, it's five marks, they expect us to do some work, okay? And we've just run out of time. Right, grade 12, so we will start on 8.2. That is where we're going to start tomorrow. And then listen, because it's the last Take it, remember, it's Friday, so it's at 4 o'clock. And then also, we're taking a week's break um, from the afternoon sessions, and we're only going to be doing morning sessions for the grade 11s um, for a specific reason, which you don't have to worry about. But the point is that um, we're going to be revising all the work from grade 11 in maths and science, and we will keep you updated with those lessons. So the point is, because it's tomorrow is the last lesson for a while, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish these questions that we have so far that I've got for electric circuits and then I'm going to find all the exam paper questions to and just practice what we've covered so far okay and then when after we've taken the week's break then I will come back and carry on teaching you the other stuff okay have a wonderful evening cheers